The autonomic nervous system is composed of three subdivisions. Sympathetic nervous system, parasympathetic, and enteric nervous system. In this video, essentially, we will talk about the enteric nervous system and a few words about the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. It is very important to note that the gastrointestinal system has its own nervous system, which is called the enteric nervous system. Many neurophysiologists call it the second brain because the enteric nervous system can and does function autonomously, but it also communicates with the central nervous system through the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system, meaning that it is also influenced by the central nervous system. The principal components of the enteric nervous system are two networks or plexuses of neurons, both of which are embedded in a wall of the digestive tract and extend from esophagus to anus. The first network is myenteric plexus, which is also called Orbex plexus, and the second one is submucosal plexus, which is also called Meissner's plexus. Talking about the localization of these plexuses, first let me draw here the section of the small intestine somewhere between the duodenum and ileum and we will see where exactly these plexuses are located in a wall of gastrointestinal tract. As you already know, like the rest of the gastrointestinal tract, the small intestine is made up of four layers of tissue. The mucosa forms the inner layer of epithelial tissue and is specialized for the absorption of nutrients from chyme. Deep to the mucosa is the submucosal layer that provides blood vessels, lymphatic vessels, and nerves to support the mucosa on a surface. The two layers of the smooth muscle, an inner circular layer, and a longitudinal outer muscular layer make the muscularis externa. Finally, the serosa forms the outermost layer of epithelial tissue. As I already said, the principal components of the enteric nervous system are two networks or plexuses of neurons. The first one, the myenteric plexus, is located between the longitudinal and circular layers of muscle in the muscularis externa here, and as I already said, it is a network of the neurons looking like this. The second plexus, which is called submucosal plexus, as its name implies, buried in a submucosa over here and looks like this. In general, the enteric nervous system consists of some hundred million neurons. About the functions of these plexuses, I would say that myenteric plexus increases the tone of the gut as well as the velocity and intensity of contractions. This plexus is concerned with motility throughout the whole gut. In short, I would say that it controls digestive tract motility. As for the submucosal plexus, it is more involved with the local conditions and controls local secretion and blood flow to the submucosa, which of course determines absorption. Also, it controls local muscle movements. Now, let's in detail talk how the enteric nervous system works given an example when a person eats something. First, I will explain how the enteric nervous system controls peristalsis. It is extremely important to note that enteric nervous system works into two different ways. First, it functions autonomously using the local reflex, and second, it also functions in communication with sympathetic as well as parasympathetic nervous system. 
first I will explain how it functions autonomously. Again, let me first here zoom a section of a small intestine somewhere between duodenum and ileum. Here we have mucosa, circular muscle layer. Here there is a longitudinal muscle and of course serosa. Over here we have the myenteric plexus which is consists mainly of three types of neurons. The red ones represent a sending network of neurons and blue ones represent the sending network of neurons. We also have two types of sensory neurons here. The first one which I'm drawing here receives stimulus from the smooth muscle. And also we have another type of sensory neuron which is located in a submucosa. They would be stimulated by chemical composition of the food. Both sensory neurons give branches to the ascending as well as descending network of neurons and stimulate them. And of course, don't forget that here in the submucosa, we have the submucosal plexuses. Again, let's say this man has eaten a hamburger or some kind of meal and the bolus has reached the small intestine now. In order to understand how the enteric nervous system causes peristalsis, let's divide this part of the small intestine into two parts, oral and aboral. The bolus is traveling towards the aboral part from the mouth, as we know. Then, in the small intestine, the bolus distends and stretches the intestinal smooth muscles. Intestinal distensions further stimulate the sensory neurons in the myenteric plexus. Also, another type of sensory neurons which are located in a submucosa would be stimulated by chemical compositions of the food. Both sensory neurons give branches to the ascending as well as descending interconnecting neurons and stimulate them. Then, the ascending network of neurons release excitatory neurotransmitters like acetylcholine and substance P to the circular muscle behind the bolus and causes contraction of the circular muscles behind the bolus. In the same time, descending network of neurons in this place release inhibitory neurotransmitters like nitric oxide and VIP vasoactive intestinal peptide to the longitudinal muscles causing relaxation of this muscle. But in the front of the bolus we have to have relaxation of the circular muscle allowing the bolus to move forward. Therefore in front of the bolus descending neurons release inhibitory neurotransmitters like nitric oxide and VIP to the circular muscle to cause relaxation of this muscle. At the same time, ascending neurons release excitatory neurotransmitters like acetylcholine and substance P to the longitudinal muscle and causing contraction of this muscle. To sum it up, we get contraction of the circular muscles and relaxation of the longitudinal muscles behind the bolus whereas in front of the bolus we get relaxation of the circular muscle and contraction of the longitudinal muscles. All these processes allow the food bolus move forward toward the anus. Well, now I've explained how the enteric nervous system functions autonomously using the local reflex. And as I already said, it also functions in communication with both the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. We will see how enteric nervous system takes sympathetic and parasympathetic innervation. The sympathetic neurons influence innervation to both plexuses 
supplying the myenteric plexus as well as submucosal plexus. The same is also true for parasympathetic nervous system, but they work opposite to each other. The sympathetic nervous system stimulates the body's fight or flight response. It would be activated in a case of threat, stress and fear. In all above mentioned situations, you do not need to increase gastrointestinal activity because you have to save yourself first. Therefore, the sympathetic nervous system inhibits both plexuses, decreasing peristalsis, blood flow, absorption, local secretion in a mucosa. As for parasympathetic nervous system, as you already know, it is responsible for the rest and digest. When you eat some meal, parasympathetic nervous system will be activated and dominates over the sympathetic nervous system and stimulates both plexuses causing increasing peristalsis, blood flow, absorption and local secretion in mucosa.